the nucleus of the Sanity Project is the new and ancient story. It is what has anchored into the field one very important aspect of sanity, which is simply to see the human being as what they actually are, which is a sacred being, a divine being, life itself taken form as a human being. That's what each of us is, life. And reverence is simply the result of that perception. Sanity is simply to be in reality. If you're in your delusions and in your fantasies and those become their own reality, then that's not sane. Sane requires a connection to the real beyond yourself as you know yourself. Maybe many people in your lives, they are still in another world. The reality that those people are in can exert a tug on yourselves. I know it exerts a tug on me. There's an entire society, there's an entire political culture that's pulling the other direction. So what's to prevent me and what's to prevent each one of you from getting pulled back into that old reality? It's each other. We hold a new and ancient story together and we establish a cord a cord, a lifeline. I need this sustaining lifeline when I'm out in those other realities, a, a sojourner, uh, an emissary into those other realities. That connection helps keep me sane, helps keep me honest, because it can happen so insidiously. The takeover, you don't notice it happening, but you forget who you are. You forget what's real. That's why it's so important that we gather. It's not really our job to decide where we will be placed in our lives. That's called destiny. It's our job to respond with love, with compassion, with kindness, with generosity to those circumstances, with patience. And how do we do that? By being sane. Every person who does that, who is in their sanity, in their kindness, in their love, in their integrity, in whatever situation you are placed, generates the morphic field of all of those things, of, of sanity, kindness, compassion, love. When I'm in a challenging situation, what do I do? If you have established the reality that says, here is what a human being does when he or she is in a challenging situation, when the ego temptations are strong. Here's what a human being does. You establish a principle of reality. We're offered a choice. It's not that some external intelligence is doing it for us. The external intelligence is offering us a choice. Here, I'll put you in this new reality for a moment. Do you want it? Yes or no? How do you say yes or no? By acting in accord with it. What is a human being in the new story? What is human nature? How does a human being behave? What choices does a human being make? You tell me. That's how we solidify the new story. That's how we solidify the timeline that makes that not only the new story, but the ancient story too. The more we solidify it, the less it is a new story. And we realize that it's been here all along.